Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be troubleshooting this Impax IM800i inverter generator. Right then, since I put my initial video up of this, um, this inverter generator and we did the sort of review on it and tested it out I've had a lot a lot of inquiries emails comments on YouTube etc Twitter Facebook asking me uh, loads of questions of they can't get theirs to start it's not working properly they can't do this can't do that they don't know how to do bits and pieces so I thought right today we just have a quick run through just the basic starting procedure some preliminary checks and uh, a bit of troubleshooting just in case you're having any problems yourself okay so we'll turn it round then and first of all we'll do the preliminary checks right then we'll do a few checks before we start okay you got your generator you make sure there are no leaks anywhere right the fuels where it should be the oils where it should be you make sure you've got fresh fuel in there as well we use super unleaded for these machines because we tend to find it works a little bit better eh? and i know it's a few pence more but it is worth it to prolong the life of your your generator okay and it, it they do run a bit better on it to be honest right so we make sure that there's no problem with that, everything's fine. We've got the machine in the off position, the eco in the off position as well, right? That's done. If you're gonna run this, really, you should be connecting an earth wire. Not many people do, but this is insulated from the ground on rubber feet underneath, okay? So we need to have this uh, little wire off there to an earth rod and we push it down. And if anything happens with the machine, anything goes wrong, instead of the electricity sitting in there or trying to discharge through your plug socket, it will just go down to earth and Try and keep you safe okay so that's what you do first of all now we'll turn it round and we we'll just have a look at the information that's on here there's a lot of info on here a lot more than on anything else that we use really um, it tells you about the spark plug it tells you about the oil to use in there and leaded fuel only there's a little warning sticker down here about uh, low oil level and it not being able to start clean the air filter elements it's all on here you just need to sort of digest the information and, and take it in. Um, it is difficult. We sometimes, as doesn't start, and it's basically to do with the checks that you should do before you start it. There is a starting procedure, and you just have to make sure that you follow that to the letter, and uh, fingers crossed it should pull and it should work. So next, we'll have a look at the starting procedure itself. One of the first things to check is the vapour lock on the top, okay? When you put your machine away, you turn it round to close. When you want it, you turn it back to open. If it's not open, when you're pulling the starty or it's running, it's taking air out of the, t it's taking fuel out of the tank, and the air can't get in at the top to replace it. It causes a vacuum and it stops. Right, so you make sure that's open. Yeah. Next, we make sure this is on. Right, we turn this to on, and we make sure that the eco is off. We don't put anything in the plug socket or anything in the 12 volt output. We just leave it bare as it is. We start the machine and let it run, turn it into eco mode, and then we can plug our appliance in and, and go from there. So next to start it, we have to put it round onto choke. So you put it round onto choke. This little thing down here, which I really forget about so many times, and we're pulling and pulling and it won't go. Turn the fuel to on. Okay, so that just allows the fuel now to come through. That's a physical tap like you have at home and it's in the off position, nothing will come through, not even a dribble. So you need it on, on, on full. And then we've got a primer bulb and the primer bulb clearly states on the top, pump up to six times, etc. So we'll give that a few pumps on there. Now, if you ever push that in and it sticks in, right, that's because this is off and you've caused a little vacuum between the two. So just a reminder you let go and it pops out okay so i think that's about it isn't it we've primed it up we've got it on choke the fuel's on it's on run eco's off now i should be able to start it now a bit difficult to start when you're sitting down because you're trying to keep some pressure on the top but we'll have a go oh well there you go now it's running away and it's running quite fast because it's on choke Turn it from choke to run, and it lifts up. It's drawing more fuel through. Now, we press the eco button, and the revs drop. That is basically the generator running on tick over, right? So it's running on tick over. You need it on a fairly flat surface, and you need the exhaust 
pointing away from where you're sitting, working, whatever it is. I don't recommend starting these up inside. However, we have got ventilation and extractors in this purpose-built workshop, so it's not so bad for us. I just put it on stop. I take it off eco first. Lift up. And then we stop it. There you go. I hope you heard all of that over this. Uh, it is a quiet generator, but it's a bit loud when we sat inside. So that's it, that's your starting procedure. Right, next we'll move on to troubleshooting. The first thing to check when you're having trouble starting one of these inverter generators is the fuel, right? We run these on super unleaded, we pay a few pence extra, it does make a difference. The fuel goes in the top, we've got a vapor lock on here, which actually prolongs the life of the fuel. If you turn that to closed when the machine is sat um, not working, it will it will prolong the life of the fuel, right? Because the it stops the vapors escaping. But because these are small engines, they are quite finicky, a bit picky about the fuel that they have through. So if you've had fuel in here for a couple of months, say you go on a camping trip or you're doing whatever with it, loads of people buy these as an emergency backup or or just use them sporadically. If you've got fuel in there for a couple of months, it's best to take that fuel out and put fresh fuel in if you can. Um, I know that seems quite wasteful, but if you can just try and measure it and, and run it out of fuel when you're using it, it will work a lot better that way. Um, second thing is on here, if I can open the, the lid, is you have a fuel filter inside, right? You see the fuel filter? Ours is nice and clean all the way round, yeah? When you fuel in the machine, just be mindful that the fuel you're putting in needs to come from a clean container really. You can't fill it up at the pump because it's not big enough, so you have to put it in a container first. So make sure you've got a clean container and it goes in through a clean filter and then into the tank. And then that's as much as you can do. Next, we'll talk about the oil. Um, if you're having trouble starting it, there is an actual auto cutoff with these and it's a little sticker down here that says this. Um, if the oil level gets too low, then it, will, it won't start. There is a light on the front here, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there you go, oil alert at the bottom. Although, how you see that when you're trying to start it and pulling it from, from behind and not seeing the front, you need somebody with you to look at that. But it says oil alert on the front. Now, I've done a servicing video on these and a setup video. So I'm presuming that you've already looked at those. You take this cover off, there's a little oil dipstick down at the bottom. Take that out, check the level, top, some, top it up with oil. Um, if it's got to the point where you've run it for so long, it's burnt some oil off and the oil level's a little bit low. If there aren't any leaks about anywhere, you know, as we said at the beginning, check around it for any leaks or, or make sure there's no residue anywhere. If it's burnt and run long enough to burn enough oil off, you should really be changing the little bit of oil that he's left in there, right? You need to get that old oil out. It'll be dark and quite gloopy and put some fresh, nice oil in. Um, it says 1030 on the side. When they've been running for a while, we use straight SAE 30 um, mower and generator oil. Um, it's a little bit thicker. Use a good branded one and it will cling to the, the, the parts within the engine and it will so, sort of stop a lot of wear and tear. Okay, so that's the oil part of the things. Make sure that's on. There's a light on the front to do it. Um, basically, clean oil all the time and make sure there's enough in. Right, next we'll have a look at the uh, exhaust system. Right, one of the most common problems of these is the exhaust system blocking up, right? You run it on not great fuel, old fuel, whatever it is, run it sporadically. It, there's a lot of carbon buildup in there. And I'll just show you now how to check for that. If we look in here, there's the exhaust port and there's a little gauze in there. Um, I'll take this cover off and we can have a better look at it, right? Now, you might think that you want to check the air intake first before you check, check the exhaust, but it's easier to check this because we can see through that little window that's on there and we can take this off, right? There's the, this is the exhaust. Now, if you've been running the generator, don't touch it, but you're probably watching this because you can't get it to run, right? Or it keeps cutting out. So there's a little gauze on there and that's a spark arrester. And this, just stops anything that's coming through 
and, and blowing out the back so you don't get any flames or anything like that but it's very nice and shiny and silver around the sides and a bit black and sooty on the back now what happens is the fuel's not great that's going through it's a bit dirty and whatever and this builds up with carbon right you've got a little jubilee clip on there you can undo that and take that gauze off and i'm sure if you went to some hardware store somewhere they'll be able to sort you out a little bit of gauze and you could put it back on if you haven't got time to do that or you've got some uh, a, a torch at hand if it'll light we've got a little blow torch here and with that blow torch i won't do it now on like for you we'll just give you a rough idea you can burn that and see it'll glow up and we glow that up like that be careful of the plastic right and we're just cleaning that off right and it's burnt all that carbon off or a lot of that carbon off it's burnt a lot of it off right and that makes the air way to escape a lot easier so you think that you check the air filter, but the air filters rarely block up. They're behind a case, then they're in a case on their own and they're a little piece of foam. There's not a lot to block up there. It's normally the exhaust that causes the problem because the gases can't escape. It chokes the engine and it will cut out. So you can do that as a temporary measure. If you're in real problems, you can take that off and run it without it, but I wouldn't advise it really. It's on there for a reason to like stop the sparks and the flames coming out. So it is best to, uh, to to leave it on if you can or put some new ones on. But if you can clean it like that, you know, it will be great and that will run for hours and hours again. Right, let's have a look at the next thing. Okay then, next we'll check the spark plug. Right, I've got an old one here to show you what they, they look like. So, but we'll do and do this. We're not going to actually check the spark plug itself if you want to look at how we remove the spark plug you'll have to take a look at my other video on the on the servicing of these machines okay now see if i can get this in for you because it's very uh difficult to see okay i'll turn this over i think can you see in there there's the little bit there this is sits on top of the spark plug and it pulls out like so okay it's not a really tight fit and there is a little bit of rubber on the top that sits in to just help make a seal right so with that we just put that back down on there in fact i'll show you i don't have to do that i can show you from here because i've got this spark plug it sits in like so okay and it pushes right down into there and you push it on as far as you can and that's how it works this is an old spark plug that we took out of one of these this is like d1 cmr6a if you need to buy a new one and you can see it's quite choked up again these are small engines they're running at high revs they're running a long time they're burning through a lot of fuel and the fuel might not always be the greatest because you're putting it from dirty cans and whatever into into machines so it's quite dirty on there um we took that one out we put a new one in and uh, it works great so if you want to see the video on me doing the spark plug just have a look there there'll be a link in the description somewhere and a couple of other videos about this machine right i'll put this one back on and we'll put the cover back on and then we'll have a look at the next bit so if you got to this point in the video and you're still having problems starting it well there's not a lot left to look at really there's the air filter in there and then just to make sure that all the fuel pipes are connected up etc I'm presuming there will be because we haven't got any leaks so we'll take this cover off here and then that will allow us to have a look inside at, at the workings um i don't do anything with the electrical side of these things there's um as a generator you're generating power um you're generating 230 volts just like you would at home so if you don't know what you're doing it's a bit of a dangerous thing to be going poking around in um however to set this machine up or this generator up you have actually got to take this cover off anyway to, to do it so we're allowed to do this but i wouldn't do much more really um you see on here we've got these grooves the, these are to let the air flow in and out all right um this is sat right underneath the air filter this one here um with it being sat right underneath the air filter you can just give it a brush off um, 
or, or a blowout just to make sure that there's nothing uh, blocking it. If you're in um, a field or something, you might get grass or whatever in there, but they're generally pretty clean. It has to come through that outside filter and it comes through the holes in the bottom of here. I'll just take this off and you can see inside. So we just take that off and then there's your filter. It's just a tiny little bit of foam, cheap, generic foam you can get that sort of stuff from anywhere if yours is uh, broken or ripped or full of gunk or whatever it is you can give these a tap out you tap it on the bench or on the machine there's no dust coming out of that so ours is pretty clear if it's really dusty and blocked up you can wash it but just bear in mind if you do wash it through just use water and when you've actually done that you you need to leave it to dry for 24 to 48 hours because you don't want any water getting sucked in through to the uh, the carburetor and stuff because it will never run again then so that's it so that's your that's your air filter back on and while we've got that off we can have a just a quick look if you've got to fill the oil that's the oil filler down there you can always check the oil while you're in um this is just the carburetor at the top we've got fuel coming down there's little fuel lines we just make sure there are no leaks or anything in there and and that's about it that's as far as we can go really We've got the fuel side of it all we need for this thing to run is fuel and air so we've got the air coming in through there we've got the fuel coming in through there if it's choked up we can clean the exhaust out on the back as i've shown you before and we just make sure all the buttons on the front are in the right position it needs to be on run the fuel needs to be on the vapor lock needs to be unlocked and and that's as much as we can do right i just pop it all back together and make sure it still runs now i've had it apart and uh, we'll see what we can do from there So there you go, as is working, all fine, tickety-boo as they say, I'm happy with that. I hope this has helped somebody out, um, if you're still struggling with it, drop me an email. Um, if it's under warranty, take it back. I know that doesn't always help because you don't live close to where you bought it from or you might be on holiday using it at the time or out somewhere and you need the power, but that's as much as we can do with it. So. We've gone through all of that. If you're still having problems, then please take it back or phone up the number. There is actually a number on the side, a customer helpline. You can phone them up and give them a ring. All right. Thanks for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. You can give me a thumbs up and subscribe. That'd be great. Anything nice to say, pop it in the comment section below. You know any more about these than I do? Just let me know as well, because I'm always willing to learn. I'm Jimmy the Mower. I'll catch you on the next one.